Tibet. An improbable wildlife kingdom. Dominated by China's largest and the world's highest plateau. Flanked by the great Himalayas. Despite extreme radiation and oxygen deprivation, a group of creatures have adapted to survive at high altitude. Great mammals, scavengers, fleet-footed antelopes, cold-blooded reptiles, and even a renegade band of primates. A place also home to an ancient people. Together, they find a way to live on the roof of the world. A bear smashed one of their windows before fleeing into the darkness. The plateau's bear is a smaller relative of the American grizzly bear. Its thick, shaggy coat protects it from the harsh Tibetan storms on the plateau, where there is little shelter. This 450-kilogram predator doesn't fish for salmon like the grizzly. Instead, it fishes the plateau for a furry creature called a pika. The pika is a close cousin of the rabbit and hare and makes up 60% of the bear's diet. Its other key role is to keep the great meadows and grasslands of the plateau healthy. Its extensive burrow digging helps to cultivate the soil. Peekers consume 50% of their body weight in grass every day. The bear is not the only threat to the pika. Perhaps their greatest foe is the Tibetan fox. It's an age-old battle of wits between the hunter and the hunted. Despite appearances, this fox isn't a wily loner. Pairs stay together for life, sharing care of their young, who stay with their parents for almost a year. Couples may also choose to hunt together and to share their meals. The vast plateau, full of pika, means that these foxes have a ready supply. In summer, the plateau can resemble a typical grassland ecosystem but it lacks many creatures you find at lower altitudes. Cold-blooded reptiles are very scarce. But there's a species of snake living here that is found nowhere else on Earth. The story of how the hot spring snake has survived here, against the odds, is the story of the creation of the plateau itself. They are the subject of much interest from scientists. If they can find them. Hello. 
了蛇的气息，但这个石头太深了，我们不可能把它整个挖掉。这个这个太阳再热一点，有可能露出来。This snake species is the only one to live at such high altitudes. It mainly lives in the Sea of Wind, and is known as the Sea of Wind. Here, the snake is the most famous. Rewind 40 million years. The Indian tectonic plate collided with the Eurasian. The land buckled on impact, creating the Great Himalayas. The collision also uplifted the land behind the newly forming mountains. Gradually, this created the world's highest and largest plateau. As the plateau rose, the people and some of the animals living on it slowly adapted to allow for high altitude living. Whilst others perished, unable to adapt to the extreme climate. 2000 By living in and around hot springs, a byproduct of the plateau's creation, this snake has managed to cling on to survival. The heat from the springs raises the surrounding ground temperature up to 21 degrees Celsius, creating a microhabitat which allows the cold-blooded snakes to survive. Why 就今年刚生的，现在用的还是它身体里面的卵黄、卵黄，这都是学术界需要进一步研究的东西。它的生活史这么重要的一个物种。The hot spring snake won't stray more than a few hundred meters from the water. Being restricted to the area around the springs, the snake's staple diet is fish. It's a fragile existence for an animal dependent on geothermal heat and a limited food source. For most animals here, the food chain is critically balanced. Many creatures subsist on the plateau's most prolific and stable food source, grass. And this must be shared amongst wild animals and their domestic counterparts. <laughs> Livestock are a key part of Tibetan nomadic life. And provide essential meat and wool. Some herders here still use the age-old custom of bartering to acquire goods. Here, animals can be currency. 
But they aren't the only domestic animal kept on these grasslands. The yak has also been all important in sustaining the life of the Tibetan people, who have tamed and domesticated this great bovine over thousands of years. It is Tibet's largest mammal. And today, both wild and domestic yaks graze the highland pastures. Fossil records reveal how the yak's forerunners have been roaming the plateau since at least the last ice age. Evolving to cope with the extreme altitude and cold. They adapted an extra large heart and lungs to deal with the lack of oxygen and extra ribs to accommodate them. They have fewer sweat glands than other bovines, helping to preserve heat, meaning that they sometimes need to go to higher altitudes in the summer to avoid overheating. For thousands of years, they have been a key food source and beast of burden for the Tibetan people. Yaks provide daily sustenance in the form of milk, butter and cheese. Their shaggy coats make goods of all types, tents, bags and even rope, while the softer underfur provides the basis for clothing, blankets and yarn. Nothing is wasted here, even animal dung has value. It provides fuel in a land besieged by harsh winters where wood and coal are scarce. An adult yak is too large for most predators, but when they do die, their large carcass provides a bonanza for smaller animals in the delicate food chain. Any carrion is soon cleaned up after the bigger animals have had their fill. The Himalayan vulture is a key part of the clear-up operation for carrion on the plateau. Some scientists believe their bald heads may help them keep clean while feeding on carrion. But one species of vulture, the Lamagaya, has taken scavenging to a whole new level of recycling. And the clue to its mode of behavior is its feathered head. It prefers bone to dead flesh. It picks up a bone from the cliffside and soars as high as it can get and then drops it onto rocks to smash it into smaller pieces to eat without competitors trying to muscle in. Not all food sources are this difficult to exploit in Tibet, though.
Around the lush forests of Lingzi, there are rich pickings, especially for the Tibetan macaques. But the change of season has created tensions over the best fruit crops. Macaques live in a society rife with political intrigue. A carefully structured hierarchy helps create a stable primate society. From the overall 3,000 monkeys living in the valley, smaller groups have formed to create greater cohesion. Like in human communities, higher ranking males get better access to resources like food and females. Females also have status, preferring to mate with higher ranking males. However, the average tenure for an alpha male is only about a year. But unlike humans, the male's rank decreases with age. The alpha males are on high alert. Small battles will break out between groups to establish the best feeding spots. Everyone is watchful and wary, sticking close to their group for safety. But a young male has wandered off into the open grasslands where he's vulnerable. In the end, he escapes alive, but shaken. Once the skirmish is over, the primates will return to their favorite pastime. Grooming. It's perhaps one of the most important activities for primates. Helping to reinforce bonds between members of each group. And while the group is relaxed, the young take the opportunity to play and practice their climbing skills. Sometimes to their parents' consternation. But summers feel short here. Tough times are always ahead.
Tibetan seasons can be harsh all year round, including summer. Dramatic storms are common. For the snow leopard, hunting goes on. And night often brings opportunities for a kill. It's been a successful night's hunting. Another burrow has been taken. Now the big cat is resting in the morning sun after having its fill. But the sun's heat quickly takes its toll. It begins to overheat under its thick fur. It's imperative that the cat lowers its body temperature by finding shelter higher up the mountain. The snow leopard is torn between protecting its kill and cooling down. The carcass is too heavy and is reluctantly left to the scavengers. Around Lake Mugio, it's now early summer and a crane chick is gaining independence. It's learning to hunt for food with the guidance of its parents. Across the plateau, the young of many animals are finding their feet. The bar-headed geese make hay while the sun shines too grazing on fresh grasses, roots and leaves that fringe the lake in abundance here. For the plateau's Tibetan fox, it's time for a bit of opportunism. A group of Tibetan gazelles the smaller cousin of the Chiru are passing through. A mix of adults and young are grazing. The young gazelles have found their feet and are adjusting to the high life on the plateau. It's still a vulnerable time for them. They are too quick for a bear, but the stealthy fox is still a threat. The fox moves carefully, trying to pick out the smallest, frailest one. She might be too late. The young are strong enough already. Undeterred, she tries for something a little smaller. A giant woolly hare seems oblivious to the approaching danger.
perhaps it knows that it is also too large and agile. Today, the fox goes hungry. In Lingzi village, Despite the abundance of food in the valley, the macaques are still making the most of the extra handouts. The macaques' intrusion on the village two decades ago didn't go unnoticed by the local government. So what began as an unwelcomed invasion has grown into a harmonious relationship between wildlife and man. A relationship from which both the villagers and the macaques benefit. Tibet, dominated by a giant high altitude plateau, ringed by the greatest mountain range in the world. A place of wonder and home to people of strength and serenity. And to a vast array of creatures living on the very edge of existence. This is life on the roof of the world. Thank you.